Hey guys, it's Max Convexity. Welcome back to the channel. Let's check out these defiance funds. It's lunchtime here in Austin, Texas. Rainy day here in Austin. Let's see how the funds are doing. It looks like the market's selling off. Here's a 24 hour chart of the NASDAQ. And it, you know, it's selling off and continuing to sell off. It, it sold off uh, yesterday afternoon, sold off Wednesday afternoon. It's anyway, so it's kind of continuing to sell off. S&P, similar story. Russell, the strongest one of the bunch, actually was trying to, uh, trying to establish a bullish trend this morning. It got rejected and it got rejected. All right. So let's look at the, uh, let's look at the, Five minute max spreadsheet. Okay, well, a five minute max spreadsheet. The first thing you can see is all of the uh, the benchmarks are ahead of the uh, the underlines, or all of the all of the high yield ETFs are beating the benchmarks or the underlines. Here's the strike prices they they chose. Here's the premium. So this is the money they earned for selling these strike prices. This is the break even, which is just the difference between the premium and the strike. In any event, this right here is the points in the money. This right here is what it would cost us to get out of the trade. So right now we sold this strike for 97 bucks. Okay. Well, unfortunately, it's going to cost us $361 to, to close the trade, to settle the trade. And we have to settle it at the end of the day. It's not a choice. We're, we're going to settle it at the end of the day. All right. JDPY, uh, same thing or similar thing. They sold options for 18. They're worth 43 now. So uh, not good. But uh, IWMY is still hanging on by thread. They sold options for $12.02 and they're worth $11. So they could close them right now for break even. It, it would appear or close to break even. Okay. So here's the actual charts of uh, let's look at the Cash Russell see where they are in relation to the profit box. Cause it's getting tight. Yeah. Look at that. It's they're right at the bottom of the profit box. That's why the premium they, you know, that's why the premium you earn from these damn things is so important that could, you know, cause you're the seller. So you want the highest price, but the higher the price you get, it literally moves your break even line further back. If they would have got twice as much for this option, you know, it, the, the break even line might be here. So, that's why, in you know, in times of volatility, you know, option premiums go up and, and option sellers can make a lot of money. But, you know, of course, they also do that in times when the market moves around more. So this morning there was a number either at 730 or 9. I think it was consumer price something CP. Anyway, it doesn't even matter. There's always a number. There, there's always a number and it's always supposed to be bad news. And in any event, it turned out to be. So I say it turned out to be nothing this morning, but it didn't lead to selling this morning, but it is, is leading to selling right now. So maybe it wasn't nothing after all. Evidently it wasn't. Um, in fact, let's look at, let's look at the, let's look at this real quick. Okay. So 24 hour. Yeah. The number that came out at 730 was actually bullish at 730. Whatever happened to the market made it go up. Then between 7.30 and 8, it settled back down. And the market opened at 8.30, and we've gone straight down since then. So, yeah, evidently, whatever it was, it wasn't perceived well. In any event, you can see that the extra option premium, look, uh, look at this. This option, we sold it for 97 bucks. And yesterday, we were just getting 77 bucks for the same type of option. The day before, 62 bucks our paycheck went up by 50%, you could say, because we get paid based on the premium in the option that we're able to, to capture. Any event, and I talked about that on the morning show too. Let's look at some of these. Um, let's look at some of these other funds, these yield max funds. Let's check out Coinbase and see what's going on with it. This is a 30 minute chart. So their profit boxes, the, the good news is their, their uh, covered calls are in no danger. Their strikes are in no danger of getting blown through. Uh, we'll check out Tesla and Crash. Crash's max profit is down here at 171. 
Tesla's max profit is either 187 or 185. In any event, Tesla still has plenty of room for appreciation on the upside. Should the market turn and start running between now and the end of the day? I don't see that happening. <laughs> uh, but crash still has room on the downside. Should Tesla continue to sell off, but not very much before crashes is, is capped. These guys have probably already rolled these options into next week. Uh, here's the AMD. It's a 30 minute chart of AMD. AMD's starting to pick up a little bearish momentum. Here's Nvidia. I talked about that gap yesterday on the, this huge open gap. And it'd be the first thing the bears would want to do to try to fill it, try to drive the price down right to this, this level. And they almost got to it. So we'll see what, then the next thing the bears will go through for, if it continues to be bearish, the next thing they'll try to try to get is the next gap. You know, we'll see. And that'll prove this move was a fake out. If that doesn't happen, if it turns around and keeps going up, then this move wasn't a fake out. So we'll see. This is this is a really fun one to watch right now. All right, let's look at uh, Mr. All right, well, that's, Mr.'s already rolled this strike out into next week. Check out Amazon. All right. Yeah, Amazon, I, I was hopeful they could break out of this bull wedge. but uh, And I thought when they got up here, they were going to, but that turned out to be a fake out. All right. Well, I'll be back at uh, the end of the day, and we'll see how everything's going. Look back at the buffer report real quick. I just noticed now NVIDIA's leading on the downside. NVIDIA's leading on the downside, as is Coney as is Maxi, as is Misty, as is Marnie, as is Infly, as is Phoebe. Anyway, today is not a great day, as is AMD, as is Apley. They're all leading on the downside, basically. Wow. Well, we always have the indexes. That's why I like the index. The indexes are less volatile. So even before I looked, I know we aren't going to have as many leading on the downside. Doesn't matter indexes can't, doesn't mean indexes can't lose money or aren't volatile at all. But, but anyway, sure enough, we have one leading on the downside compared to the single stocks, which are just a lot more volatile. Actually, two, ULTY and YMAX are on the naughty list today. We should put QDTE on the naughty list too for having Z pretty much zero, <laughs> zero buffer. QDTs down to buck sixty five, where the benchmarks down a dollar sixty six or a, a point sixty six percentage point, percentage point dollar. It doesn't matter. It's all just metrics and measure stuff. Um, interesting. All right. The good thing we can say about the indexes we have to be positive though we have Bali, Poppy. TLTW. All right, guys. Well, I'll be back uh, after the market closes and we'll have a, maybe I'll have an end of day live stream even, and we'll talk about the end of the week. It's also the end of the month. So gosh, I forgot it's the end of the month. Sometimes that's another thing that I worry about. And I just thought about this. Sometimes selling picks up at the end of the month or buying picks up. But if you if you have a stock market move, sometimes you get an exaggerated move. So I sure hope this selling doesn't pick up. All right, guys. Well, I'll be back after the market closes and we'll figure it out one way or the other. Later.